Thank you for joining us in prayer. Please enter your conference ID and press the pound key. The conference will begin when the next party joins. Praise the Lord to those that's getting on um, Facebook. If you can hear me, please let me know that you can hear me. And praise the Lord. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a, you can hear me. Last time I know that we had problems. Praise the Lord. If anybody can hear me, let me know. All right. Thank you, Sister Andrea. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate it. We'll wait a few minutes. It is seven o'clock. Praise God. So we'll go ahead and get started. Praise the Lord, Sister Lillian. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Deary. You can hear me. I don't know what happened last time that I talked. I guess I don't know. Anyway. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and open up in prayer. I guess whenever anybody gets on the prayer line, they'll just jump in. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you, O oh God, for being so merciful, so kind to us, O oh God. We thank you for allowing us to see this day. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. God, we're asking that you would bless us, O oh God, tonight on this Bible study. God, we're asking that you would help me to decrease and you would increase, O oh God. Lord, we're asking that you would touch us, O oh God. Word in my mouth, O oh God, that it may edify the people, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're asking that your words will go out, that someone will say, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to change my life around, O oh God? In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord to all those that are on the line on tonight. Amen. We're going to go ahead and jump right into the Bible study. So we can um, jump right into prayer at eight o'clock. Amen. Um, we thank God for, um, you know, this opportunity uh, to teach and never take it lightly. Um, asking that you would pray for me. Um, my eyes has kind of been kind of messed up. I don't know if you can see here that they're a little puffy. Um, and if they start watering, it's because of the lights and the, praise the Lord, Mother Eans, um, the lights and all the things looking and me looking down and reading. Um, I have an infection in my eye, so pray for me. Um, we're going to start. We're going to do something um, very um old. Um, last time I taught was don't believe the lie. This is kind of in in and um align with that as well of not believing the lies kind of in line with it um similar um maybe not always 100 percent, but anyway it's similar to um not believing the lie um but i didn't um name it as that i rem i named it as remember and repent and we're going to go to a very uh passage of scriptures that was um very familiar that we read it often we talk about it often and so we're going to jump jump right into it and we pray that we can get through it and um, give it how it was given to me we're going to go to um, the book of Luke um, and I, I want to go back to that um, don't believe the lies because you know a lot of times we think that we have done something that was so bad or so horrible that the Lord won't forgive us and so um, today I want to just come with you, to you with there isn't anything that you can do that God won't forgive you for, especially when you have a repenting heart, especially when you have the repenting heart. Um, praise the Lord, Elder Shelton. 
especially when you have a repenting heart. Um, I know that I taught um, a while ago, maybe last year sometime about um, David and, and repentance. And, and so we're going to um, probably bring that into this lesson as well. But we really don't want you to, um, I had a, heard a quote um, from one of my um, um, devotionals, um, daily devotionals last week. And it says, don't let the enemy fool you into thinking that the cross wasn't enough. And that just made me go back to the lesson that I taught, um, in June about don't believe the lie because the enemy will make you think that the cross wasn't enough. The enemy will make you think that what you've done in life was, um, is, is detrimental and you, you can't come back from that. You can't, um, come forward. You can't, um, get, uh, pick yourself back up or you can't come back, um, to get back in line with, um, the word of God or with God and get yourself back together. And so today I just want to come and try to help you out with this a little bit. And it, we're going to go into, uh, Luke, very familiar passage of scripture. Um, before, I'll probably read a quite a few things, but I'm going to start at verse number 34. So I'm going to go to 34 and then I'll probably jump back up to some of verses and go down to some verses. But I want to get to the point of what I'm talking about. And then so we'll start at verse number 34 and then we'll go back. And it says Luke verse number, chapter number 22, verse number 34. And it says, and he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall, cr- shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me 35 and he said unto them when I sent you with purse and script and shoes like I don't want to really read that scripture but I started it uh like anything and they said nothing then I'm going to jump down to verses number 57 and we know what was happening in between that um you know Jesus um, went and asked them to go and pray with them for an hour and they couldn't pr- They didn't pray for him. He went up and prayed. He came back. They were asleep. He went up and prayed, came back and they, you know, and so he said all these things. And then Judas comes and portrays him with a kiss. Uh, then Peter, uh, you know, does what he does with his um, sword, to cut the ear off of the soldier and then Jesus put the ear back on. And so then they're getting ready to take Jesus away. And so here we are, 57. And he denied him saying, woman, I know him not. Um, I guess I should read above that. 56 says, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him and denied him saying, woman, I know him not. 58 says, and after a little while, another saw him and said, thou art also them. And Peter said, man, I am not. 59 and about the space of an hour after another confident, confidently affirmed saying of a truth, this fellow also was with him for he is a Galilean 16 and Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake the cock crow crew. And the Lord, 61, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crew, thou sent shalt deny me thrice, 62. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. This is where I get my topic or theme tonight from is from these last two verses 61 and 62 Peter remembered and then he wept which is a form of repentance so remember and repent is what we're going to talk about tonight and I know that we all know the story about Peter so let's give some background about Peter and who he was Peter was um we all know him as the one who, um, when Jesus was walking on the water and they were in the boat, Peter, he said to Jesus, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come, right? And and Jesus said, come. And Peter began to walk on the water. 
then he began to sink. And he said, Jesus saved me once he began to see the winds and the waves and all the things. And, and he said, Jesus saved me. And Jesus reached down and saved him. He said, oh, ye of little faith. So that this is the same Peter that we're talking about. We're also talking about the same Peter who Jesus said, um, uh, Peter, um, whose name means rock and said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right. That's in Matthew 16, 18. That is the same Peter that we're talking about. So we're talking about this Peter who was a fisherman and who, who said, um, Jesus said, come follow him. And he came and he followed him. And so here we are after he's walked with Jesus for three years, after they had the um, Lord's supper. And then Jesus begins to talk to them. Now, what I like about this is that Jesus begins to talk to, to, to the disciples, all of them, not just Peter, but he didn't, begins to talk to all the disciples. Now, in the middle of the feet washing, you know, in the, I mean, the Lord's Supper, we find that Jesus tells them that someone will betray them. And of course, all of them are, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Which, you know, they, I'm sure that Jesus knew who it was that was going to betray him because he said, um, the one who is dipping his hands or how, how it's put. I have to go back to the scripture to know exactly how he put it. But he knew that one of them was going to betray them as they were sitting there with the supper, with the 12 that he picked. He knew one was going to betray him. But as he's talking to them and he's telling them what is to come in Luke. And we understand that all the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, um, they all talk about this particular um, verse that happens. However, in Luke, we find that in chapter number 22, verse 31, Jesus says something to Peter. And I know a lot of people preach on this scripture. Matter of fact, I like the scripture, too. It gives me some type of hope, it gives me some hope. It gives me some encouragement every time I read it or somebody preaches on it. I get excited every time somebody gets ready to preach on it. <laughs> But anyway, um, verse number 31, and it says, and the Lord, praise the Lord, Uncle Denny, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And I get excited. I don't know why I get excited every time I hear that uh, somebody preaching it, <laughs> but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren now this is a very powerful scripture um it's a very powerful scripture i think that um maybe be, I get so excited about it is because um, I understand that even though the enemy, the devil tries to come after us and get us, I understand that he won't win. He's already lost. And this scripture is evident of that. But it's funny how the Lord says this to Peter, right? Right before he tells him that he's going to deny him three times before the cock crows or the rooster crows. And so when I think about this, it's like, you know, um, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to sift you, to have you. And, and that's just like us today. I believe that the enemy desires to have us. Remember, I talked about don't believe the lie a couple um, weeks ago. It's the same thing. The enemy wants to put our mind to thinking that he has reign and he has control over what's going on. He has control over our thoughts and our, our minds and, and what we're doing. And the truth of the matter is the enemy does not. He only has permission to do whatever the Lord allows him to do. And so what I like about this is he tells him, the Lord says it, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. To sift as wheat, it means that he wants to separate you, 
right? Satan wants to separate you from God. He wants to separate you from Jesus Christ. He wants to separate you from your relationship that you have with your Lord and Savior. So he's saying that Satan he wants to come and cause a divide. Satan wants to come and cause a separation. Satan wants you to come. He wants to come and make you to lose hope. He wants you to come to make you feel like you're nothing, to make you feel like you um, can't do anything, like you're not good enough, like you can't whatever, that Jesus won't forgive you and all these things. So he wants to cause a separation. He wants a separation to happen. And so this is what's happening here. And, and it's, it's, it's mind blowing, but then it's, it's not because, you know, um, he tells him, this is what he tells him. He tells him this Satan desires to have you. And it's like, that's not something even for us. That's not something that we don't know. We know that the enemy is out to get us, right? We know it says the Bible tells us that the enemy comes to steal, kill and to destroy. We know this. This is the word of God. The word of God tells us that he comes to kill, steal and destroy. So we know this, but it's just terrible that even in our knowing that we don't recognize the tricks and the schemes of the enemy, even knowing. And this is just this. I don't know why, but when when I was reading my devotional and this came out in my devotional, it just stuck with me so much because I was like, my God, this is so real that, you know, we don't even understand or we get caught up in the tricks and the schemes of the enemy. Even after the Lord has told us what was going to happen, even after the Lord has shown us what was going to happen, has told us what was going to happen. We know the word of God. We know that the enemy comes out to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that he's as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We know these scriptures. We know this. But for whatever reason, even with us knowing, we still somehow get caught up in the lie. We still get caught up in the moment. We get caught up in the sin. We get caught up in what, however way you want to put it. We get caught up even knowing what the word of God says about the enemy. Knowing it, we know it, right? So we, we, we fall for the lies. We fall for the lies. We become ignorant or, um, um, and we get caught up in his tactics and his schemes and we get all those things, right? <coughs> and then we also, but then we know that he can win. We, and then we know too, that we can't rely on our flesh because the Bible tells us also that in our flesh to well, no good thing. And so we cannot win the tactics of the enemy if we're getting caught up in our flesh, if we're relying on our flesh, if we're agreeing with our flesh, if we're doing everything with our flesh, we're going to get caught up in the tactics and the schemes of the enemy. We cannot do that. And so this is very important for us, people of God, that we really watch and pray watch and pray. We really need to watch and pray that we enter not into temptation. We really need to watch and pray because the enemy is coming in and he's really trying to deceive us. He's really trying to get us to cause us to separate, to walk away from God. And we understand that in the last days, right? It says, the Bible tells us in the last days that men will become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And that there will be a great falling away. And we don't want, I don't want there to be a great falling away because the time is winding up. The time is becoming near. Time is coming and we have to prepare ourselves and get ready for the rapture. As Dr. Williams uh, pre talked on last Tuesday about revelation, we have to be ready so that we can be raptured up and not caught here during the tribulation. So we want to make sure that we are uh, watching and praying and understanding the schemes and the tricks of the enemy. The enemy wants to cause a divide. The enemy wants to cause a separation. The enemy wants to sift you. He wants to separate. That's what happens when you're sifting wheat. It's a separation that happens, right? And so the enemy wants to cause a separation. 
He wants to cause the separation. And so we want to make sure that we, we, we don't get there and, and allow the enemy to separate us from God, separate us from um, the people of God separate us from the, uh, the people who, who love us and, and Jesus Christ himself. We can't allow, we cannot afford to be separated from God. We cannot afford for the covering of God to be removed from us. Let me put it that way. Let me, I'll put it that way. We can't afford that. We can't afford it because we don't, this is a wicked world that we live in. And therefore we can't afford to not be covered by the blood of Jesus. We cannot afford to come from up under the, uh, the umbrella or the covering of God. But see, the enemy will get your mind so messed up and get you in your thoughts and get you all crazy and thinking stuff and thinking people don't like you and people don't love you. And, and I'm grown. I could do what I want to do. And, and all this stuff, the, the enemy will get all that in your head and your mind and cause you to walk away from the very thing that can save your life from the very thing that's covering you and keeping you from all the hurt, harm and danger the very person Jesus Christ himself that can save your soul from damnation the enemy will cause you to walk away and leave it all Jesus help us Lord and that is not what his desire is so he's telling Peter here he's telling Peter Peter the devil is desiring to have you he wants you and I'm going to tell everybody on this line that the devil wants you because if he can get you, then he's done his job. If he can get you to deny God, if he can get you to turn away from God, if he can get you to walk away from God and stay in your flesh, then he's done his job. If he can get you to move away from, from God, he has done his job. But understand that we have to pray just like Jesus said here in 32, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not meaning that you don't quit that you you believe what I've told you and what I've instilled in you what you have seen what you have heard don't let it fail you don't let it don't, your faith don't fail don't let you forget don't forget what God has done don't forget where he's brought you from don't forget that he's healed you don't forget that he's delivered you don't forget that he has set you free don't forget and this is what he wants for that your faith fail not and then and he says and then when thou art converted strengthen thy brother so once you've regained your strength once you've gained what you needed now go back and help and reach back and pull somebody else and help them to get out of where they are help them to get out of their mess help them to see and recognize that the enemy is out to kill to steal and to destroy them and so you got to help them to see where they're erring in the way and so this is what we need to do he told, Jesus told Peter, and it's crazy because Peter, I just told you in Matthew, he said, he gave Peter, he said, Peter, upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen, this is that same Peter. Oh, listen, this is what I'm saying. Even the most anointed, come on now, the most anointed preachy, come on word, know the word of God frontwards and backwards, can flip it over, can tell it to you backwards, can tell it to you forward. Even the most anointed gifted person of God, I'm going to tell you, the devil will come after you and cause you to deny Jesus just like Peter did because Peter was anointed. Peter knew. Now I know, I know, I know somebody going to say it because I say it all the time. Even during this time, I know Peter did not have the Holy Ghost. He didn't have it yet, y'all. So listen, he had an excuse. I'm going to give him this excuse. I'm going to give him a pass. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give him a pass because he had yet to receive the Holy Ghost when he denied God. Oh my God. He had yet to receive it. And so this is what even makes it more powerful because the words that Jesus has spoke to him. Oh my God. The words that he had spoke to him was pre him before he even received the Holy Ghost, before he even received the power of God down on the inside. See, Peter was. 
He was that one when they said, whom do men say that I am? He, Jesus asked the question. He was so good at asking these questions. Whom do men say that I am? And Peter, Peter was the one who said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, and Jesus said, but flesh and blood have not revealed that unto thee. Listen, and Peter didn't even have the Holy Ghost then, my God. He didn't even have it then, but he understood who he was, who he was in the presence of and what was going on. And so this Peter, that same Peter, my God, who was the one who knew who he was, who knew who he knew who Jesus was. He knew who he was. He told him who he was. And then that same Peter who had enough faith to say, Lord, if it's you bid me to come on the walk on the water. This same Peter who walked on the water with Jesus, my God, the same Peter, the same one who he said, upon this rock, will I build my church? The same one that he gave the keys. Oh, my God. Y'all don't understand this same Peter. We talking about tonight, this same Peter. So understand people of God, it don't matter how much anointing you got. It don't matter how gifted you are. It don't matter how much revelation you have of the word of God. Understand the devil wants to kill, steal and to destroy you just like he wanted to to do with Peter my God and so we get here because he took him to pray with him Jesus did and he understood Peter wasn't praying Peter wasn't he wasn't in the right position. Now understand that everything that Jesus had did and everything that Peter had had done with God and everything that he had been walking through and learning and all that stuff, it was because that's what God needed him to do. He needed to go through that process to get him to where he is going to end up today on in this word of God, in this scripture that we're talking about, because this is what's happening right here, right? We find that this is what was going on with Peter. And even though he was all these things that I just named, he was powerful the Lord said these things about him he was all of that he had yet received the Holy Ghost and so I'm gonna give him a pass for this what he's just doing he said he denied Jesus three times three times he denied Jesus and the craziest part about it is woo, we're gonna read the scripture y'all because this is what the scriptures say and this is what we do Mm -hmm. we get to saying things come on now that we don't really mean people of God I'm not exempt from it either I know that when I'm in a situation or something is going on and I'll be like Lord if you do this then I won't do that Lord if you do this then I'll go ahead and do that this is what Peter was doing Peter was boastful this is what he was because sometimes how we are right we can be so so uh our chest out we could be so oh i got this all together i'm holy you know i i'm i'm good i i love the lord i will never do anything to hurt the lord i will never do anything to hurt my relationship with god i love him and so i would never do nothing that was gonna cause me problems i would never do this and blah 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 i would never 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 and guess what you gonna do just what peter did let me read it to you because you ain't gonna believe me because because some of y'all saying you would never do it right now and i'm gonna tell you you're gonna do it tomorrow um, but anyway, you saying what you would never do. I, I would never, I would, I would never. He says in 33, I mean, no, that's not in 33. Let me go down to where he says it. Cause he was serious. I can't even find my scripture, Lord Jesus. Like y'all, I told y'all I'm having problems with my eyes. I can't even, I can't even see. How about that? <laughs> everything look, everything look blurry to me. My God, come on, Jesus, help me to see the scripture, Jesus. <laughs> That's a shame. I can't even see. Glasses is all jacked up. He says, Peter says, and, and I can't find the scripture right now. And <clears throat> I'm going to find it, though, in just a second. He says that first he says that he would not. <clears throat> hold on. Hold on. I'm going to get it in just a second. Because <clears throat> I sure can't see the blur, everything blurry around here. But it's okay. We're going to get there anyway. I'm in the wrong one now. I'm going to my next verse. Hold on. Give me a minute. I'm going to find it. <clears throat> he says. 
All right, they can't read Jesus. Y'all know what I'm saying. I'm, Lord, come on, Jesus. Help me find my scripture. Let me go to um, Matthew because I know it's in there. Okay, so the scripture says when in Matthew, in, um, hold on, I, I'm going to get it in Matthew, but he's talking about Peter. So when he says, after he says that, you're going to deny me three times, he says that he will not. He said he will die with him for him. That's what he said. Hold on, I got the scripture. He says, in Matthew 26, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet I will never be offended. 26 and 33. And then he, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that, the, that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice. 35. Peter said unto him, Thou I shall die with thee. Yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples. Understand what just happened right there. My God. Peter said that he was not going to deny God. Sorry, right, I have to get this fan going. It's a little bit hot. He said that he wasn't going to deny him. He said that he was never going to be offended. And that he said here that he will die with him. My God. That's what he said. This is what Peter said. Peter said this. And isn't that what we do today? Isn't that how we act today? Isn't that what we say today? We we say, Lord, I'm with you. Lord, I'm going to stay with you, God. Lord, I'm not going to I'm going to stay here. I'm not leaving. I'm not going nowhere, God. I'm staying in the race, God. You know, for God, I live for God, I'll die for this and that blah, 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 say blue and everything else. We say those things. But then when the rubber meets the road, hmm. When the rubber meets the road and when there is you come up against something, we usually uh, forget those words. For God, I live for God, I'll die. Peter was said he was willing to die. That's what he said. He said I was willing to die. He said he not. I'm not going to deny you. I, I'm willing to die for you and for this. Well, he thought he was until he found out that he wasn't. And that's just how we do today. We say, oh, yes, you know, I love the Lord. I'm willing to this and give up this until the Lord tell you to give up something <clears throat> like with the rich man. He said he didn't keep everything from his youth, his youth up. And the Lord said, sell all you have. Well, he said, that's a hard thing. He, he didn't want to do that. It, and that's how we are, right? That's how we are as people. We get, we get so caught up and we be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this. And I love the Lord and I serve the Lord with my whole heart and everything that's within me. I'm giving God everything I got and this and that, until the hard thing come. Until he tell you, uh, marry the girl and stop shacking. Or married a man and stop shacking. Until he's tell you to change your company and change who you hanging around. When he until he tell you to stop uh doing certain things, then then it's a problem. Then you don't want to serve the Lord with everything you got. Then you don't want to give him all that you have because you want to do what you want to do, kind of like, right? So anyway, <clears throat> so here we have we have Peter who said, No, Lord, I'm I'm not gonna deny you. I, I'm gonna die for you. Well, until it got real, listen, <laughs> he, his words was great until it got real. And that's how some of us are. Our words is great until it get real. Listen, we gonna say a whole lot of stuff until it get real. When real life happened, then we're going to change and back up some stuff and, and probably do just what Peter did and start denying some stuff and, and not saying, no, I didn't say that. No, I, I, no, I ain't going to do that. No, I, but, but, but as long as you was in it, you, you was talking, you know, we talking loud and saying nothing. We, we talking real good and we ain't saying a word, but we show talking about, oh, well, I, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Right. Until you get in front of their face and then you quiet. Oh, did I, I, didn't, I mean, I wasn't talking about nobody in particular, but 
you know what I'm saying? You you talking loud and you real boastful until you can't you ain't got nothing else to say when they really get in your face or really in front of you. Because you could talk about them behind their back all you want to, but when they get in your face, you 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 forgot your words. You okay. So you no longer boastful, you no longer proud, you no longer got that boldness that you had when you was talking about them behind their back. But okay, well anyway, that's a whole nother lesson. So Peter, he was boastful that he would never fall away. He refused to accept the Lord's prediction of his disloyalty. He knew what the Lord had told him and he didn't believe it. You talking to the son of God. You talking to God himself. How you, you, you already know who he was. You already said who he was. You knew who he was. Anyway, he, and he was, um, he was also prayerless in the garden of Gethsemane. And then he unnecessarily withheld his sword in defense of Jesus and then tried to cut the man's ear off. And then finally, uh, Peter compromised himself willfully when he um, went to a place that he shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have even been following Jesus into the, the courtyard right of the high priest. He shouldn't have even been following himself there. So he put himself in that own predicament. So here we have. In 27, we go back to 22 and 27. Now, in the other versions, I, I just want to say that in the other versions of this story, um, as we go to Matthew, it, it reads a little differently the third time that Peter denies Jesus. So in Matthew 26 and 33, it says that, uh, let's go with 73. And after a while came unto him thy they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art also one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not that man, and immediately the cock crew. And so here, this is a different interpretation that Matthew gave. Matthew tells us that he began to curse. He began to get belligerent. He got a little crazy, got a little beside himself. Really trying to say, I don't know him. He got asked three times. I don't know him. I don't know the man. And then he got real belligerent with it and got crazy. He was like, I don't know him. And start cursing and acting a, just a plum fool. Start acting a fool. And and the craziest part is, I like this 61. And it says, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. I wish I was there to see that. Because it's almost like your mama or your daddy, you know, you didn't done something wrong and you didn't even realize your mama, or your daddy was there and they didn't, they, you didn't do did something wrong and you turn to look and they stand right at you in your face. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, you didn't got found out like you just like, oh, the, the face, the, you didn't got ghost, you didn't got white, you didn't look crazy like, oh my God, I didn't got caught. I, I didn't got caught. They didn't found out. Oh, Jesus. And you looking crazy. Peter, this is what he did. He turned after he did it. He turned and looked. The Lord turned and looked upon Peter. He just looked at him. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. Hmm. All Jesus did was look at him. And then Peter remembered what Oh my God, what the Lord said. Now, the craziest part is he didn't just remember. I, I want to say it. He remembered and and how he said unto him, behold, the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. So he remembered that what Jesus told him. Did he not only remember what Jesus told him, but he also, I beg to believe that he also remembered his own words that he so that he said to Jesus. I believe he remembered not only that Jesus said, you will deny me three times after the cock crowed, but I also believe that he remembered that he said, Lord, I would never deny you. Ooh. Jesus, come on, y'all people. Let's let's be real. Let's get serious about it because it's it's one thing. Oh, mm, Jesus, help me. It's one thing to say uh, I won't do it, and then it's another thing to the very person who told you what you was gonna do. Mm. 
some pastors do that they tell you what you was going what you're going to do tell you how it's going to end before you get it started and before you come there and it get, you I'm, you know what i'm saying some some pastors and they pretty good at telling you the end before the beginning and try to block you from getting into stuff that you shouldn't be getting into but you hard-headed and so you're just gonna do it anyway so kind of like peter hard-headed just gonna do it anyway because you you got it all together and you good Mm-mm, you're not so he looked at peter and peter remembered this is what i'm saying about remembering people of god we have to remember where god has brought us from we have to remember what god has said to us we have to remember what the word of god is saying to us on how we should live and how we should walk and how we should talk and how we should uh, love one another and how we should forgive and how we should all these things we have to remember what the word of god is saying because understand people of god jesus is looking at you and whether it's a uh, it's not a physical look that Peter got, but understand he is looking at you. He sees what you're doing. He knows what you're doing. You can, as the preacher said, uh, Elder Sheldon said on Sunday, you can fool the pastor. You can fool me. You could fool other people, but the person who you cannot fool is God. God already knows what you're going to do. God already knew Peter was going to deny him. God already knew that you're going to walk away. God already knew that you was going to sell out. God already knew that you was going to give him up for something else and somebody else. God already knew that you was going to give your flesh up and turn from him. God already knew that being at home was more important than being at church. God already knew the pandemic was going to happen. God already knew who was going to lose their life. God already knows all of this stuff, but we as people of God don't want to hear it and we don't want to believe it and we don't want to follow his instructions we don't want to be obedient we don't want to do what the word of God is telling us to do we don't want to do what is right we would rather please our flesh and please ourselves than to please God but understand just like Peter he did what he thought he would never do I'm telling you people of God we have to be careful because no matter how gifted anointed how many how long you've been saved how long you've been in this race whether you're a preacher a teacher a pastor a minister a bishop or whatever understand that the devil is coming to sift you the devil wants to have you does the devil wants to cause a separation between you and God and so what the devil will do to get you he is cunning he is he is sly he is sneaky and he will do all kinds of things to get you out of the will of God and the craziest part about it people of God is we don't even recognize it we don't even see it we don't even want to see it we're okay with turning our backs on God we're okay with pleasing our flesh we're okay with doing what we want to do we're okay with it and God is not okay with what we're doing understand he is still coming back for church he is still coming back for a people that are holy he is still coming back for people who didn't separate themselves people who didn't blind themselves with the tricks of the enemy who didn't fall for the tricks of the enemy the God that we serve is coming back for a church without spot wrinkle or blemish or any such thing but understand if you get caught with your work undone if you get caught in sin if you get caught not doing what God has called you to do if you get caught oh God pleasing this flesh the more than pleasing God then understand you might as well get ready to get through this tribulation because it's coming and we don't want that we want to be able to have a repenting heart and so what did Peter do this is the pro- most profound thing that got me and and not, well not, not maybe not the most because the next part I really got excited about but this part really made me excited too because even though Peter remembered he remembered after he remembered this is a part that I need you to understand people of God after you remember where God has brought you from after you remember what he's told you and you did the opposite after you remember that you have walked away after you remember that you have turned your back on God here's what he did it says that Peter went out and wept bitterly my God he went out and he wept bitterly now understand what I'm saying Mm, mm, mm. 
I'm not saying that he he was he wept and he he just said, "Oh, I'm sorry." You know how how some of y'all do um y'all go do stuff to folks and y'all come into him with a little little sad little tear and you say, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that." Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to do that or whatever the case may be. But in reality, you meant every bit of it. You just because you got caught, you want to say you sorry, but you really don't mean it because you're going to turn around and do the same thing again. Uh, you, oh, yeah. Yeah, I said it. You're going to turn around and do the same thing. Exactly opposite of what you said you wasn't going to do. You're going to turn around and do the same thing again. Understand that's not repentance. I, I, I can't make it no plainer than that. That is not repentance. You can say you're sorry and you can show your little shed your little tears. Listen, and, 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 and it's probably not really meaning anything because your your actions is going to show that it didn't mean anything because you're going to go back to doing the same exact thing that you said you were sorry about. Therefore, you were not sorry. Therefore, you did not truly repent. Therefore, you were not sorry. There's no other way to put it. And, and let's just talk about this really quickly because, you know, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to say it because true repentance means that you are more. It's more than just feeling sorry about the sin. True, true repentance means that you're turning back. You're turning back to Christ and you're living for him. You're not going to go back and do the same thing again. You're not going to do it twice, three, four times. You're going to go back and you're going to turn back to God. And that's what you're going to do. You're not going to do it again. And that's what repentance is. Repentance may lead to tears, right? But it doesn't just stop for the tears. It stops with your actions. So you can have the tears, but it, the repentance comes with your actions. Just like with, we talked about David. When you go to Psalms 51, his tears and his actions and his words meant something. Because he said, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. He said, Lord, forgive me for my transgressions against thee and thee only have I sinned. Lord, purge me with him. His up created me a clean heart. Listen, he was serious about what he wanted. He was serious that he needed God. He didn't want to be separated from God. He knew what he needed. Now here is Peter, the same person. He didn't say any words, but understand that his action showed his action showed that he was serious and wanted and truly repented for what he did because he understood what was going on. What did he understand? He understood that Jesus told him he was going to do a thing and he did it. After Jesus looked at him, then he remembered what Jesus said. And so he remembered that Jesus said you were going to do it even though Peter thought he wasn't. And he did it anyway. What time is it? He thought he wasn't and he did it anyway. And so then he began to whip, to weep bitterly. He began to cry. He began to really pour out because he knew he had did something that he thought he would never do. He didn't think he would sin against God. He didn't think that he would get pe people to get the people. The people would get him out of character. He didn't think the people would get him to deny his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He did not think that he would get caught in that situation. And so here we are with Peter weeping and bitterly and he's crying but what happens next is amazing repentance i want to before we go to the next part i got a few minutes i got a few minutes i'm gonna talk about this real quick we 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 to today we have this um we have this thing now today where everybody is um authenticity a uh, 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 authentic movement right where everybody's being transparent or authentic, they want to say. I'm authentic, I'm being transparent. And what they're saying is, I'm open with my sin, right? I'm open, I'm, I'm openly confessing that I, you know, I got some sins. Like, I, I have some problems, I have some issues. Um, I'm openly saying that, you know, I have a problem with fornication and I have a problem with drugs or I have a problem with lying or I have a problem with stealing or I have a problem with this and I have a problem with that. And and people are openly saying what their struggles are and, and, and they're saying, you know, this is my sin. This is my struggle. And 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 the worst part about that is they're openly saying it. And yet not stopping it. So I'm confused a little bit because I think it's great to be honest. I love honesty. I don't like people that lie. I think everyone should be honest. I think everyone should tell the truth. Um, I think everyone should be open and, 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 and honest about what their struggles are and what their sins are, what they're dealing with. I think you should. 
but not to the point to where you're saying it, but you're not changing anything. You're going to continue to fornicate. You're going to continue to be in sin, live in sin. You're going to continue to lie. You're going to continue to steal. You're going to continue to do it. That's not transparency to me. That's not being transparent. That's not being authentic. That's saying that you are lovers of your flesh than more of God. That, that's what that's saying to me. When you are truly want to be authentic and truly want to be uh, uh, transparent, then you're going to step away from sin. You're not going to have people to say, I'm transparent. Let me be transparent about it and think people are supposed to agree with what you're doing. Now the devil is a lie. No, sin is sin. Wrong is wrong. And right is right. And so we have to get out of this thing and everybody want to be transparent, but you ain't being transparent enough to turn it to God, especially as Holy Ghost field folks. Listen, I, you know, I know y'all ain't gonna like it, but us Holy Ghost field folks, we should not still be saying we still in sin and we can't get this right. No, the devil is a lie. When you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You have received power. And with that power, that Holy Ghost power that you have, it should convict you. It should stop you from wanting to sin. And if it does not, then something is wrong with the Holy Ghost in which you have. Okay, because God is not a man that he should lie. And matter of fact, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot have the Holy Ghost and think you can continue to sin. You're feeding one more than the other. Therefore, you may not be feeding the Holy Ghost. You feeding your flesh. And so you might want to check that and get that back right in line with what God wants because you're not doing what God wants you to do. We need to be, if we're going to be authentic and transparent and real, let's be authentic, transparent and real. Let's tell the thing what it is. I, you know, we can't be covering up stuff. Covering up is not the answer. If you want to cover up, then you need to go somewhere where they, where they sell covers. We're not in the church and the business is not a covering up stuff. We're not covering up sin. We're not covering up immorality. We're not covering up stuff that is not of God. If you don't want it called out, don't come to the church. Because the church is a place that you need to come to when you want to get uncovered. When you want your sin to be uh, freed. When you want to be free from bondage. When you want to be set free. And so this is what we need. Peter said. He cried bitterly. And then what happened on the day of Pentecost after Jesus left? My God, before when, when Jesus died and he rose again, before he left, we're going to go to John real quick because I only got a few minutes. We're going to go to John real quick because here this part is what's amazing to me. And this is what Jesus said to Peter again. And this right here proves to me that Peter um, really repented and God heard what he said, because what did he do? He says, and if we go to John 21, I can't read it out because I only got I only got a few minutes to go. But he asked him after he denied him, right? He said um, they, they dined with him right before he was getting ready to go up. And he says, Jesus says to Peter, Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He asked him this three times. Read it for yourself. But he asked him. Three times. Do you love me? And then he said, feed my sheep. And he said, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Mm. And he said it a third time to him. He said, yes, Lord. And you know how I know that he was serious about this thing? Because on the day of Pentecost, when he was in the upper room and the Holy Ghost came in and filled Peter with the Holy Ghost along with the rest of the 120 that was in there. My God, after he got the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost came upon him, Peter received the boldness that he didn't have before. See, before he got the Holy Ghost, he was denying Jesus three times. He did it. Yes, he did. We read it and he did it after the Holy Ghost came upon him. Hmm. He also remembered what the Lord said about, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. And so after he got the Holy Ghost, my God, after he got the Holy Ghost, what did he do? He began to preach. He preached in Acts 2. He preached in Acts 3. He preached in Acts 4. And I mean, Peter preached. He preached and he preached the unadulterated word of God with some boldness that he did not have before. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was down on the inside of him. Oh, my Lord. So he repented of his sins. Listen, people of God, we have to repent of our sins. We have to repent 
repent of what we're doing. We have to repent of, of whatever wrongness that we have done. We have to truly repent and get it right. So when the, we can receive the Holy Ghost down on the inside of us and then we can get that boldness that Peter had and that boldness to be able to walk right, talk right, do right and tell people of the goodness of Jesus. Peter was bad after he got that Holy Ghost. Not that he wasn't already, but that's why you can read in Matthew where he says that he says upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it because Peter began to preach the word of God. He began to preach Jesus like never before and 3000 souls got added to the church just on him preaching Jesus. Listen. If we get out of ourselves and we begin to just preach Jesus with the Holy Ghost down on the inside, lives will be changed and lives will be transformed and people will come and turn from their wicked ways and they will turn and come to God and they will turn and want to be saved. They will turn and want to be transformed. They will turn and not want to be living in this life of wickedness anymore. They will turn to God and I'm going to tell you, but we have to do something about ourselves. We have to do something about what we're doing and what we're showing people because we can't be so bold and so great and think we won't get caught up in this and we won't get caught up in that no understand that you are just one prayer one thought one moment away from being on drugs from losing your mind for getting caught in adultery for for sinning for stealing for lying for cheating you are just one thought away from it if you don't kill this flesh if you don't fast if you don't pray if you don't get into the word of God if you don't really yield and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God do you understand that the devil will come in to kill steal and destroy you the devil will change your whole life and you won't even realize and see it coming the devil will come and tear up your whole family and you won't even see it coming because you're so caught up in the world and you're so caught up what's going on around you you're so caught up in your flesh and the the Lord does not want us. He wants us to watch and he wants us to pray. He wants us to be able to see what the attacks of the enemy are coming for us. And we should be able to stand boldly, a uh, flat footed against the enemy and tell him the devil is a lie. I rebuke thee, Satan. Get behind me. You have to be able to see it. You have to be able to believe it. You have to be able to do it. Walk in it. Don't just talk about it. Y'all bet we got to be about this thing. We can't just talk about God. We can't just say Lord I won't do this Lord I love you so much Lord I love you so much and then we don't we said it with our mouths but our hearts are far from him come on people of God we got to get it together it's time to remember and to repent let's repent and get it right let's repent and so that we can really say that we are walking for God we can really say for God I live and for God I die if you don't then you're really not living for him So people of God, we have to repent. There's no sin, no greater than any other sin. But understand, sin is sin. And sin is going to lead you straight to hell. And the enemy wants you to continue in your sin. The enemy wants you to be blinded by your sin. The enemy wants to separate you. From the people who cover you. The enemy wants to separate you from God. The people want the enemy wants to separate you from who is who's interceding on your behalf. The enemy wants to sift you. He wants to destroy you. He wants you to walk away from God. People of God, wake up, watch, and pray and see what the enemy is trying to do the tactics of the enemy and what he is doing to us and remember 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 what the Lord said remember and repent repent let's have a repenting heart Let's have a repenting heart to get it right. People of God, time is winding up. Time is coming to an end. Old people, young people, middle-aged people, babies, whatever. The devil ain't playing with us, but we show playing with him. He's not playing games, but we are. And so people of God, I'm telling you, we have to get this thing together and we have to remember 
remember the words of the Lord and repent and then receive ye the Holy Ghost so that you can have that power that you need remember to join us with prayer uh, the number is one seven two zero six five zero thirty thirty pin numbers three one five two one one four let me pray father God in the name of Jesus we thank you for this lesson God we thank you for your goodness your grace and your mercy God, we're asking that your words will not fall on deaf ears. God, we're asking that you would help your people to remember your words. God, we're asking that you would help them to repent. God, we're asking, oh God, that you would help them right now in the name of Jesus, whatever struggles, whatever issues, whatever they have, though, God, that are trying to hold them hostage, oh God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, we bind the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, for every evil and every wicked thing, every evil thought that he's trying to bring upon your people right now, even as we're praying. And God, we're asking that you would just touch them and strengthen them, oh God. Let the Holy Ghost lead and guide them in all truths. God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, fill them with your Holy Ghost that don't have it, oh God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, people of God. Remember and repent in Jesus' name. God bless you.